Welcome to another challenging day of Advent of Code. Today we are planting seeds, and we'll learn what happens if we give them fertilizer. To plant the seeds today, we got instructions. But the instructions determining the locations of the seeds is very complicated. They tell us which seeds to plant, what type of soil to use or per seed, and then what type of fertilizer to use with each kind of soil, what type of water to use with each kind of fertilizer, and so on. These properties map from one type to another, until we have a full map from seeds to seed locations. See an example of the input on the left. We are provided four seeds, and then there is a map from seeds to soil, a map from soil to fertilizer, and eventually a map from humidity to location. Given the instructions, what is the lowest location number that corresponds to any of the initial seed numbers? Let's have a look at some examples to understand this problem better. If we take a look at the full instructions, then there are these following eight types, or properties, with seven transitions between them. So we have seven maps in our input. An individual map can be understood as follows. Suppose that we have 50, 98, and 2, then this means seeds at indices 98 and 99 need to be mapped to positions 50 and 51 in the soil. To emphasize, the left number is the starting position of a range in the soil property. The middle number is the starting position of a range in the seed property. The last number indicates the length of the range. So for the second entry in the map, we can see that we map from 50 in the seed property to 52 in the soil property, and the segment for which this mapping relation holds is 48 numbers long, meaning that it ends with mapping 97 to 99. Should you ever have a position which is not in any given segment of a map, then that position simply maps to itself. Now, Suppose we have seed 79, then we look in the seed to soil map and we find that the second entry contains this number. The offset between 50 and 52 is two, so 79 will map to 81. Then we move to the next map. We can see that soil to fertilizer map does not have any entry for 81, so the number stays the same. For the outline of the solution, we start with parsing the seeds and the maps from the instructions. Then we process every seed and push them through every map. Note that every map can have multiple segments that map to a new range, as we have just seen in the examples. A key element to this solution is the use of a segment map, which simply represents one of the map entries in the instructions. I opted to make this a class which stores the three values and offers two nice utility functions. Firstly, the contains function allows us to check if a seed is in the range or not. It is simply checking if the seed, or position, is in between the start and end point of the source range, which in this specific instance represents the seed range. The translate function allows us to take a position and map it from source to target range, so from seed to soil in this instance. All we need here is the number of the seed and compare it to the start of the source range. Then add this offset to the target range start. Then of course we had our parsing function to get those segment maps. I won't dive into the full extent of parsing the input text file, but the key message here is that every transition of property has multiple segments, which map ranges. Hence, we return a list of segment maps. Looking at the outline again, we can then hopefully fully understand what is going on. We loop over every seed, and then for every seed we will look at the segment maps of some the next property transition. Then for every segment map of that transition, we check if the seed is in that segment. If it is, then we simply translate that seed's number and we break. We break here because we don't want to translate it twice within the same transition. After updating the seed's number through all transitions, we can update the minimum location, which eventually we print. And that's it for part one. In typical advent of code fashion, we are of course misinterpreting our inputs. The seeds line in our input should actually be interpreted as pairs, which represent ranges of seeds. 
For every pair, the first number is the start of the range, the second number is the length of the range. If we consider all of the initial seed numbers in the ranges of our input, then what is the lowest location number of any of those seeds? A short example is in order, I think. Here we are provided seed values 10, 5, 24, and 3. This then means that we have five seeds starting at number 10 and three seeds starting at number 24. And that's all there is to it. Now, how can we find the minimum position this time? Depending on the hardware available to you, I would consider two solution feasible. The first one is to make use of the fact that the optimal location of part one is on the order of 100 million. This gives us an indication of how large the minimal position can be for part two. So if we invert the maps and try to map locations to seeds instead, then that problem is well suited for a brute force approach with parallelization. The second solution would be to not process individual seeds, but to translate entire ranges at once. At the end, we are then interested in the lowest position across all ranges. Let's do this second solution and map ranges of seeds. The outline of the solution now looks as follows. Instead of parsing seeds, we parse seed ranges. Parsing the maps remains the same. Then we have the main section of logic, which is to map seeds to locations, which updates the seed ranges according to the maps. After we've done this, we can assume we have all ranges which represent the actual locations of the seeds. We loop over them and we collect the start points of the ranges. The minimum start point is our answer. Before we dive into the mapping process, let's see how we can modify our segment map to support our new approach. Firstly, we need to check if a range of seeds overlaps with our segment. It is no longer a single seed that is in or out of the segment. For this, we can update our contains function to check if the start or end point of a range is within the segment. The other critical function update is the translate function. Assuming that we have a fully enclosed range, meaning that there is no overlap on the edges of the segment, then we simply have to provide back an updated range. Ranges like this always only require us to handle the endpoints of the range. We don't care about storing the numbers in between explicitly. But you might wonder, what if the assumption does not hold? What if a seed range overlaps with the edge of a segment? Well, we can simply solve this by splitting that seed range into a part that is fully inside the segment and one or two parts that are outside of it. Those parts outside of the segment can be processed separately. They might overlap with another segment. In code, I went for the trim seed range function, which gives back a trimmed seed range, as well as the outside ranges, which represent the trimmed parts. Feel free to pause the video if you want to look at this in detail. Lastly, we need to tie this all together in the map seeds to locations function. Let's step through this. The first key change is that we no longer push the seeds through the maps, but we flip this around. We are going to loop over the segment maps of every transition, and with those maps, we will update all ranges until there are no more ranges left to update for that transition. We achieve this by treating seed ranges as a queue, so we prepare a list for the updated ranges called next seed ranges, and we start iterating over the seed ranges. The first element in the queue is at i equals zero, and we set that as the current range, which we will evaluate. Then it might be that our range will find a mapping in our current transition, or it does not. So let's assume we will not find a mapping. After this, we start iterating over the segments to see if we can translate. If we overlap, meaning that our current range is in the segment, then we mark mapped as true. We then apply our trim function to update the current range and to get our trimmed off segments. Then we can simply translate our current range and add it to the next seed ranges. The trimmed off segments are added to the queue because we still want to process these with the current segment maps. Suppose we did not find any mapping, then the numbers in that range do not need to be updated and we just append the range to the next seed ranges. Lastly, we of course need to increment i to step through our queue. 
And after the queue is done, we need to update our seed ranges. In the end, we went through all transitions, and we can return the seed ranges which represent the locations. And that was it. Today was already a bit more challenging than the other days, but I hope you enjoyed working on or learning about today's solution. We have two more stars in the bag, and I will be back tomorrow.